Hello again. Thanks for your company. You are watching Australia's best online football show. We're only days away from one of the most anticipated football matches on the WA calendar. Ashfield versus Bayswater in the Coolbridge Cup for 2013. In a moment, we'll hear from both camps. We'll also feature some stunning goals from our match of the week between Inglewood and Bunbury. We also check in with one of Italy's most decorated football players, Carolina Morace, who was in Perth recently. And there's the highlights between WA and Perth Glory in the Quarter Arms Cup. That match with an all-important message behind it. But first, this Saturday, August the 24th, marks the Coolridge Cup final between Division 1 outfit Ashfield and Premier League leaders Bayswater City. It's emerging as a David and Goliath battle, with both teams looking to etch their name in WA football history. Twenty thirteen Courage Cup final. The Cinderella story continues. Can you cap it off and make it a fairy tale? Oh, absolutely. Why not? Um, you know, I think you know the last time we talked, Peter, we, we believe and we're confident in our own players' ability, and we've prepared well for Bayswater. You know, if we can beat Stirling, why can't we beat Bayswater? We're preparing as we like we would every uh, every other game. People have been talking about having breakfast for the players and getting buses to the ground. And as far as I'm concerned, it's the same as any other game for the players. And they'll be prepared properly. We've done our homework on Ashfield, and you know we respect an opponent that can get to any cup final. And Ashfield will be getting the utmost respect from us. They're a talented team, and um, naturally we'll go out with that respect. And you know we'll we'll, we'll go out with a structure that will stop them to stop them playing free flowing football. But at the same time. Games won with goals, so you can't can't win a game if you don't score goals. So we've got to do our job at the other end as well and put the pressure on them. You have been uh, doing your homework. You've been spying on, uh, on some of their games. Are they a threat? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you don't beat Sterling if you're not a threat. They've got nothing to lose, so they can go out, they can enjoy everything and play with no fear. Um, we're the ones at the end of the day with our heads on the chopping block. So and it'll be mine, I think, by the uh, president if we don't get across the line. Fortunately, they've been spying on us in a couple of games. We haven't exactly performed well in the last couple of weeks, so hopefully they get nothing out of it. There's a lot more pressure on Bayswater, and hopefully on the day that pressure gets to them. It's a good pressure, and we're, we're you know we're, we're really enjoying the, the fact that there is this sort of um, accountability on us because we are going in as, as massive favourites, and you, we just have to get the job done and, and respect a, a very very battle hardened opponent. We got a lot of good people that are you know actively in the club now that put a lot of time and effort in, and we got a lot of people that'll be there on the day supporting the team that'll put the, the team the effort in years gone by so you know we'll be going out and we'll be doing it for those guys and, and hopefully we can bring that as you say a bit of silverware back into the cabinet. Yes, certainly a massive weekend of football action in store. And don't forget the champagne breakfast from 8 o'clock on Saturday at Elita Stadium. Make sure you book your tables. All right, good luck to both teams. Time now to take a look at the Match of the Week highlights between Inglewood and Bunbury at Intega Stadium. <laughs> Round 20 at United's Intega Stadium and this was a match for the home side to cement a spot in the top five and earn a finals berth. And the signs look promising for United in blue just after the kickoff. Alex Coniglia causing some trouble down the flank before feeding the ball to Greg Sharland who had all the time and space in the world to fire the ball home. Sharland neatly picking out his spot and beating Bunbury's keeper. The Bunbury boys needed a guiding force to help them get level. A foul on Steve Howson allowed Liam Hutchison to step up and take the free kick well outside the box. His right foot kick did the rest. A deceptive and classy goal beating United's custodian Luke Martino. Bunbury back on level terms. Hutchison's goal was only a taste of things to come. An ordinary effort by United to clear the ball off the throw-in found Ryan Francis with time to take a touch and deliver an exquisite shot with his left foot. A stunning goal by Francis, Martino at full stretch, but couldn't do anything but to watch the ball go past. And there could have been more pain for Inglewood. This clearance almost turned into an own goal. In the second half, Bunbury countered a United attack. Inglewood's keeper hesitated, but did enough to cut the angle for Housen. 
Greg Sharlan almost got one back for United from this free kick after a wicked deflection off the wall. The boys in blue hitting from all corners to no avail. While United had more of the ball, they got little reward for their effort. A turnover in the middle of the park sent Housen into the clear path of goal, beating his marker and then with plenty of time, steadied and sent the ball into the back of the net. Bunbury causing a massive upset, Inglewood's chances of making the top five finals campaign taking a battering. Force coach Trent Hathaway more than happy with his troops. You put a lot of effort out there, you're going to get results and they've been doing it since I've taken over, so credit to them like I said before. In other results, Bayswater fought back from two goals down against Balcata, a hat-trick from Steve Burton, including this late goal, and then another by James Isaiah, sealed a gritty 4-2 victory for City. Fellow joint leaders Sterling were humbled by Perth at Dorian Gardens, Lions player Daniel Machewski shown a red card. A one-all draw for the Northern Derby, Coburn just managed to edge out the NTC, and Floriot, who were also reduced to 10 men, mustered a late goal to draw against Armadale at Alfred Skeet Reserve. To the ladder now, and City moved to the top of the table, clear by two points, but the Lions still have a game in hand. More details about that match shortly. Coburn jumped to outright third, Sorrento hold on to fourth, and after teasing with Inglewood over the past few weeks, Florian Athena secure fifth spot for this week at least, to earn a place in the finals. Don't forget the Coolridge Cup finals this Saturday at Leeters Stadium in Mount Hawthorne. The football action starts with the 18th Cup final early morning. And on Sunday, Sterling hosts Balcata in a catch-up game, a must win for the Lions if they plan to take top spot in the league. As always, highlights and results on Australia's best online football show next week. FIFA ambassador and football heroine Carolina Morace and her assistant Betty Bavignoli have arrived in Perth and they're going to share their wealth of expertise and football knowledge with a selection of clubs around Perth. Carolina debuted for her country at just 14 years of age, scoring 105 goals in 153 spectacular appearances. Carolina also holds the record for scoring the most amount of goals in one game at Wembley Stadium. She is the ex-coach of the Canadian and Italian women's national football teams and the only woman to ever coach a men's professional team. We speak to this football great to find out more. What would you say was the highlight of your playing career? I have two moments. Once, like uh, when I was a when I was a player, and it's exactly the four goal in uh, in Wembley because I remember that uh, at the end of the game, the captain of uh, England, Hope Powell, she came to the dress room with the ball, with all signature of uh, her teammates, and uh, she gave me the ball, and this is one the the greatest moment uh, in my career, like a player. But, and uh, like a coach, uh, when uh, I won with the Canada, the CONCACAF gold medal uh, two years ago, two years and a half years ago. And what are you trying to teach these young girls here tonight and in your sessions in Perth? What sort of knowledge are you trying to impart? We just uh, try to, to coach them in the situation of the game. So it's, for example, to control the ball, to do something after. We emphasize the agility, the quickness, the change of direction, the fake. In this session, we, lot, we, we work a lot on, on the coordination. And what's next for you, Carolina? What's your next goal? I don't know. I just uh, opened in Rome an academy that uh, is a Juventus Academy. Juventus uh, FC uh, decide to go in Rome for the first time. At this moment, I'm involved to grow up the little player from between 5 and 12 years old. Of course, I, I like to coach. I, I feel that uh, I am a coach and more for um, adult people. I'm available, so I want to see what will happen maybe after the World Cup in 2015. 
Some of the best players from the local state league took on Perth Glory in a pre-season friendly this week. It was a Cancer Council fundraiser and as we discovered, it was close to the heart of one particular Glory player. I think it was probably last season that I sort of noticed a bit of a spot on the back of my leg. I didn't think much of it to be honest and uh, in the off-season just went and got it checked. But we made a decision just to get it nicked off and, and checked out so uh, came back, yeah, melanoma. So lucky enough for me, I've hit it early enough and, and it's all clear. The message for everyone is just to, you know, whether it's six months or yearly, to, to go and don't, go and get these checks because it's, you know, it, it can save you. So the money from the Call to Arms Cup comes to Cancer Council WA and we're very grateful for all of the community donations. So it allows us to do the things that we do and, and particularly we know that men get more cancer than women and we also know that men don't do as well when they get cancer so it's a very good opportunity for us to spread the message with a group that's traditionally hard to get to. Soccer gives us the opportunity to talk to a whole group of people that we might not otherwise get to talk to and, and it is a very popular sport and increasing in popularity and it also works very well with the Live Lighter sponsorship that Perth Glory have and we're part of that message as well so it's a nice fit getting two people through sport. It's a great game, we fell behind in the in the start but you know we showed great character and great attitude and we didn't give up. But um yeah, you know, it was obviously great to score my first goal for Glory and I'm very happy about that. And the crowd here supporting the quarter arms cup with a serious message behind it. You impressed with the, the fans tonight? Yeah, you know, obviously cancer is a big thing, you know, and it's obviously a great great thing to see a big turnout, you know, to, to fundraise for something as, as serious as that. So, you know, yeah, I think everyone should be proud of themselves that came down and hopefully we put on a good performance for them. Gavin? Uh, you must have thought after scoring that delightful chip, you must have thought, happy days. Oh, definitely. I thought happy days. I saw headlines already. Uh, I thought that would have got me a move straight away, but after about 20 minutes, my legs started feeling heavy. But when the goal went in, I was loving it. I was loving it. How does this rate uh, compared to the other ones you've scored in the State League? Oh, it's definitely up there. It's definitely up there, especially scoring across uh, the Perth Glory's number one goalkeeper, one of the best in Australia. Uh, it, was, it was a privilege. I just looked up, seen it. Dinked it over him and that was it. I usually do a somersault, but old age got the best of me, so I just carried on running to the corner. <laughs> and that winds up another busy show of Football 360 for this week. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget all the action, the Coolridge Cup final at Leeters Stadium this week. The action starts at 10 o'clock with the 18th Cup final between Wanneroo and Gosnells. We hope to see you there. Until then, it's bye for now.